<clears throat> Hello, yeah. everyone. Thank you for joining us in this session. It's a real pleasure for me and uh, my co-partner co uh, Federico to be here in this session. And uh, we are going to explore uh, the capabilities of Microsoft 365 with guests. But before to start, let me thank you, the organizer and the people that put effort in uh, realizing such events. And it's uh, very important uh, to be here because we can share our knowledge also with other with other um, very skilled and uh, professionist and let's now move with the next slide and don't forget to participate to this, to this um, <laughs> great uh, challenge where you can uh, win cool devices in uh, in this uh, in this conference all right a few words about ourselves uh, of course, thank you to the sponsor for uh, for helping us to realize and put in place this uh, incredible event. A few words about ourselves. I will start. Uh, I am um, Julian De Luca, a solution architect. I am a Microsoft uh, MVP for Microsoft 365. And here you can find the link of my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm very active there. I try to post two videos per week and um, I'm 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 in the in the context of Microsoft 365 and Azure in the my YouTube channel. It's aimed uh, to everybody, developers, IT pros, and uh, business users. Uh, I try to to put content which is useful to to everybody. All right, now I will uh, give the stage to Federico. Yes, thank you, Giuliano. I'm already really really happy to be here. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, joining uh, this session. Uh, my name is uh, Federico Porceddu. I am a uh, Microsoft 365 MVP. I work at Avanat uh, from the last 12 years as a solution architect in uh, modern workplace uh, area. Uh, you, you can find my feed Twitter or uh, if you want, uh, join me in LinkedIn. And I think that we can start uh, our session with the agenda. So maybe I can take control. Yeah. So uh, I can. Uh, move to the next uh, slide. Great. And here you can find uh, the agenda of uh, the session. We talk about guests in Microsoft, Microsoft 365. Uh, so there is just an intro about uh, what is a guest and uh, how we can manage guests in Microsoft 365. Then we deep dive uh, some problems with guests that we know that uh, it's not. Uh, immediately and uh, there are, could be some issues or some uh, risk uh, in management guest and there are a lot of there are already two demo uh, one about uh, which uh, kind of api there are to support the guests in microsoft 365 and then another uh, another demo about uh, uh, guest life cycle uh, management with a great tool, uh, GAMS tool, uh, developed by Giuliano. Uh, great. Go to the first uh, slide. Here you can find some uh, information and uh, an introduction to the Microsoft 365 um, guest approach. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you about uh, this crucial aspect of our organization. Um, because the ability to collaborate and share information while maintaining the right level of security is really, really important. Uh, so as we navigate through the complexity of data sharing in this um, today digital landscape, it's imperative to strike balance uh, between collaboration and confidentiality. Uh, so in many organizations, the, the challenge uh, lies in sharing file in a efficient way and documents with the right people without the risk of oversharing. Uh, so this is where Microsoft, Microsoft 365 guest uh, comes into play, uh, offering uh, an easy uh, to use uh, uh, file collaboration tools uh, that empower organization to and, and, and enhance the, uh, their collaborative efforts. Okay, uh, so imagine this scenario where sensitive data needs to be shared with external collaboration. Uh, without the right tools, uh, uh, 
uh, user may uh, resort to outdated methods such as email uh, or other not official way to sharing documents. Uh, in fact, this process um, is error prone and already increased the uh, unimproperate uh, information sharing uh, method. Uh, moreover, um, faced with challenging sharing files, individuals might be tempted to use uh, uh, not regulated consumer products, uh, introducing, introducing a new uh, set of risk. With Microsoft 365, uh, we have the power to deploy solution with various configuration uh, tailored to our organization uh, needs. And this not only help uh, uh, protect the intellectual property, but also facilitate easy collaboration with documents or other files. So the goal uh, to create a synergy between security and usability, um, ultimately boosting user satisfaction and reducing the risk of, um, we name it uh, shadow IT. Uh, shadow IT is when uh, people uh, create other tools or use other um, um, or, or other approach in order to satisfy something that uh, IT can't uh, satisfy. So in essence, Microsoft 365 provides a comprehensive solution uh, to challenge of modern collaboration. Uh, as we, we, we delve deeper these capabilities in this session, and we explore how this platform can be a game changer, a game changer for, the, for your organization. And um, so let's embark this, this journey together and unlock the full potential of uh, secure collaboration with Microsoft 365. Uh, let's start with the, the, the first configuration. The, uh, everything starts uh, in the Entra ID, that is the new name of Azure Active Directory. And there are some settings about external identities and Microsoft 365 groups. So you need to enable uh, the use to the, the you need to enable uh, the use of guest inside uh, your tenant and the enter ID uh, settings. So after um, you can choose to manage for single user or for Microsoft 35 groups too. Uh, the um, the other settings are related specific application in particular SharePoint. In uh, the SharePoint Admin Center, uh, there are um, uh, great things that where you can manage uh, the level of security. Uh, so there are uh, some most permissive uh, settings and uh, less permissive settings, and uh, they are differentiated um, from SharePoint to OneDrive. So you can choose a setting for SharePoint, uh, another settings for OneDrive, and the settings are uh, new and existing guests. So uh, you can um, provide a way and uh, give to the to you or your user uh, a way to create guest user in uh, your tenant while sharing files or limits it to existing users. In this way, uh, all, all uh, the man, the process uh, to the, yeah the process the business process about to create guest in the, the tenant are um, off offline. So there are another process where IT manage the creation of guests, the invitation of guests in your directory, and um, and the most um, the less permissive settings is that you you can't uh, share um, information files with guests in your organization. Uh, usually uh, SharePoint is uh, uh, something setting like existing guests and OneDrive is uh, typically open to new and existing guests. In this way, there is a way to um, share use uh, file and documents to external user uh, for your uh, people, for the people of your organization. Let's continue and see uh, in Teams what happened. Uh, these um, Experience uh, that uh, for sure you already know uh, is um, an experience that uh, uh, causes to you to uh, add a guest to Teams uh, uh, so you can uh, share files uh, using Teams, so in a secure way. And in, the, in this way, it is um, 
everything in uh, in the app so you don't need to do things uh, in other application you can do it uh, in teams uh, the same is in uh, sharepoint okay in SharePoint 2, you can choose how to share files to your external co um, collaborator. So uh, there are settings specific for uh, sites. And in this way, you can distinguish um, the settings from the tenant that may be, to be uh, less permissive, like uh, existing guest only. And you can manage a specific uh, SharePoint set level sharing and uh, implements a different setting for this uh, SharePoint site. Uh, meanwhile, there is uh, the, this pop-up where you, where you can choose uh, and uh, invite uh, some uh, external user uh, to collaborate uh, in your SharePoint site or in a specific folder or for a specific file. Uh, the same or really, really similar is in OneDrive. So in OneDrive 2, you can choose how to uh, configure, uh, to, uh, how to share uh, your, uh, your data, your files uh, from your OneDrive, okay? And this is uh, the, the, the new experience, okay? Microsoft, as you know, Microsoft 365 is uh, in a roadmap, and uh, in this ro roadmap, uh, a lot of features uh, will be deployed every month, every six months, and uh, if your tenant don't have uh, this uh, setting, for sure uh, we'll have uh, soon. Okay, let's go and uh, to the next slide and introduce another argument that is um, what would happen in your Microsoft Entra ID. Uh, the Microsoft Entra ID in the Azure Active Directory uh, organization, uh, there is the list of guests and uh, what happened usually is that uh, uh, this list uh, through the monthlies uh, can increase a lot. Uh, so there are some filter you can uh, filter in this list, uh, the user um, type uh, property and user type property uh, can be guest. So in this way, you can manage uh, all the guests, okay? And see the full list of, of the guests. Uh, if you look at the, the creation type, uh, that is invitation, and um, you can uh, see from this uh, interface uh, if the user already um, uh, accept the invitation or not. Uh, take in mind that when you add the user from SharePoint or for, from Teams and it is a new guest, uh, the uh, target uh, uh, the target user uh, receive an email and it needs to uh, manage and click this email in order to access to your tenant. So it is an invitation. And we'll see better um, in the next uh, uh, minutes uh, where we talk uh, about uh, API, Graph API, and we see how to manage invites by uh, using Graph API. Uh, Great, uh, let's go to the next slide and introduce another way to uh, collaborate with people using Teams. And this way is the Charlotte channel. Uh, Charlotte channel is a, uh, a type of channel. There are three types of channel in Teams, the standard channel, the private channel, and Charlotte channel is a flexible and um, way to collaborate within and across organization. So you can manage a set of individuals within or outside or team or tenant. In this way, uh, these are a great user experience because there is no uh, tenant switching. Uh, so you can avoid oversharing and address team proliferation uh, because you just specif specify that there is a, spe a specific channel shared with external user or user from your tenant. Uh, taking in mind that uh, shared channel use uh, enter ID B2B direct connect. In this way, uh, you can configure this um, cool feature from Microsoft Teams. Uh, great. Let's go to the next slide and uh, Giuliano, Take the stage and uh, thank we you. Can talk thank about you. problems with guests. Thanks, Julian. Yeah, 
Thank you, Federico, for your uh, introduction uh, and overview about how you can uh, start configuring uh, your Microsoft 365 tenant and how you can uh, uh, put in place good governance with um, to handle guests. Now, before uh, to go forward with the presentation, I would like to just briefly share my screen because I would like to do something with you uh, before uh, jumping uh, in the core of this uh, of this session. So, what I would like to do here is add uh, a guest in uh, in a team. I am in a Microsoft 365 tenant here. And now I'm going to invite someone here, let's say in this team IT. Hopefully I can invite guest here. It seems yes. All right, so uh, let's invite someone here in the IT team. I just invited a guest and let's do something different now in SharePoint. I am in, uh, in the home site of my SharePoint tenant. And now what I would like to do is sharing uh, just a file with a guest and I'm going to use my private email for that. I will show you later why I'm doing all these things. And now let's do another thing. So directly in uh, in another SharePoint site, which is the global IT site, I'm going to invite uh, a guest. Hopefully the guest Access is turned on here for this site. It seems yes. All right, I invited now a guest in a SharePoint group. And before I share the file with this uh, with this guest. So now the last thing that I would like to do is sharing a file in OneDrive. This is another use case. So I can share this um, recording, this team meeting recording, for example. Let's go and selecting a guest here. Let me send this. All right, now, just doing a recap. I invited a guest in a team, in Microsoft Teams. I invited a guest in a SharePoint group on my SharePoint site. I invited a guest, I shared a file in SharePoint with a guest and I shared a file in OneDrive with this guest. Okay, I would say that now we can re-upload the presentation and start again with the session and later we will see what will happen with every action that I performed. So I think I have problem with this uploading function with PowerPoint Live. Um, Federico, can you please re-upload the presentation? Sure. It's yep. just with my user, I would say. I don't know if because I'm using the new Microsoft Teams. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, I need to re-upload. All right. And here we are. It's loading. Okay, perfect. And then we will talk about how to manage the the lifecycle management process with guests and problems that we could face with guests. All right. Now let me take control. Thanks, Federico. All yeah. right, and let's move forward now let's talk about with problems potential issues that you can uh, you can have dealing with guests so as federico mentioned before we have now this new name uh, i am not a huge fan of this name microsoft enter id but so that's the new name and so what are the problems that you could face so at the beginning when you start with um, with Microsoft 365, when you start to work with Microsoft 365 and collaborate with partner and vendors and guests, it's pretty cool. So it's a powerful tool and instrument that you can use to collaborate with people outside of your organization. However, in the long term, so when you start to, to work a lot with partner and vendors, you could have a lot of guests in your uh, Active Directory in your Microsoft Enter ID environment. And this is not pretty nice because in the long term you can lose the, the control and, and then you have to review every time uh, um, the guests in your uh, Active Directory. So you have to figure out which user of your organization has invited which guest and if the collaboration is still needed or not. 
in the end you can have your poor IT admins that struggle and face um, the, the big challenge by reviewing every time uh, how many guests there are in the in the tenant and why they are there and if the collaboration is still needed or not so this is a big issue and problem and what we can do to avoid that or better what we can do to have a, a process an automated process that make a review in uh, every X, X time, so we can uh, maybe be uh, more uh, polite and quiet by using this automated process. So what we could do is using and leveraging the capability of APIs, Microsoft give us this chance with the Office 365, the name it's still Office 365 here, Management API, and Microsoft Graph API. But if you have no time to build your solution and to create your process internally or giving this to, um, to an, a consulting company, for example, you can implement an out-of-the-box solution provided by Microsoft, but this requires uh, licenses. So let's give, um, give it a shot to this uh, Microsoft out of the box solution here. What we have, it's um, an overview. It's we we have several scenario, um, common scenario where we can have um, an automated mechanism that make a review of guests in uh, in Microsoft 365 and more specifically in Microsoft Teams. So the license that we need to, to deal and to play with this solution is the Microsoft Entry ID Premium 2. And this costs $9 per user per month. So this is something that you have to keep in mind. So if you want to use this solution that it's ready to go, you, you have this um, initial impact and uh, initial uh, thing that you, that you have to keep in mind. So there is a cost. And uh, as I said, you have to pay $9 per month per user. Now let's see closer the scenario. So in the first scenario, what we have here is that an administrator, an IT admin, create an access review policy for the group A in Teams that has 75 users and one group owner. Now the admin here will assign a license to the owner of this team to make a cycle review of every guest, in this case, all 75 users in this team. With this kind of mechanism, the owner is able to, to make a review of every guest in this team. Now this, of course, it's applied to the single team, but if you are in an organization with thousands of employees, we, we are not working with just with one team, but potentially with 100,000, in the worst case, with million um, teams. And doing this kind of thing for every team, reviewing every team, it's a such of incredible job to do. So you need just at least uh, one person that uh, works on this thing every day, 100% uh, only on this thing. So then you have also this other cost that you have to consider, not only licenses, but you have also workload here. So, um, and in other scenario where you have more group owners, you have to assign more licenses, like in the second uh, use case, where you have to assign three licenses of the Microsoft Entry ID Premium 2. So you are going to pay $9 for three. And, and then you have any any other, you have additional and um, um, other uh, use cases where you could have potentially more uh, owners or maybe you want to have a self-review. So it means that Every guest will make a self-review of him's, him or herself in order to check if the 
collaboration is still in place and the access to the resource is still needed. But this is the really the worst case because I have to pay a lot of money if I have to to give licenses to to everybody to make a self review. In this case, in the in the fourth one, we have the group C with 50 members and users make itself a, a, a review. So it's uh, it's incredible. So you have to pay 50 licenses because you have to give a license to every user. And so it's it's not so so cheap. But at least we have seen this uh, use case. Now I will give the the ball to Federico that will uh, showcase the the usage of Microsoft Graph, and then we will see a demo as well. Thank you, Giuliano. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, yes. The, let's shift our focus to another aspect of Microsoft 365. The uh, dynamic world of APIs, okay, and the powerful Microsoft Graph uh, uh, world. Uh, today's uh, into this digital landscape, uh, the ability to uh, leverage APIs uh, is a game changer, uh, providing uh, opportunity for customization, integration, and innovation. Uh, Microsoft 365 APIs and the Microsoft Graph. Uh, uh, serve as the gateway to unlock this potential, uh, the full potential of your organizational data and uh, collaboration capabilities. Uh, so this tool empowers developers and IT professionals to create uh, a tailored, seamless uh, solution that align with specific organizational needs. Um, Media scenario where you need to integrate Microsoft 365 services into your custom application. Uh, so there is where uh, this API come into play, offering a set of inter interfaces uh, that enable you to interact with uh, all the Microsoft 365 services like SharePoint, Outlook, and behind. Uh, so this level integration is not just uh, about uh, Anything features, uh, functionalities, but also uh, creating a um, digital ecosystem with your organization. Uh, let's delve into Microsoft Graph, uh, that is a unified API endpoint that simplifies access to a wide array of Microsoft 365 services. Uh, it acts as a gateway uh, to a uh, wealth of data, uh, allowing you to traverse the uh, users, groups, files, email, and more, and users in particular way. Uh, we, we we focus this uh, this uh, this part in the this session. Um, so, what you can do with Microsoft Graph is a lot of things, but you can streamline workflow, automate tasks, and then is collaboration. And um, what you can do is. Uh, um, Automize this feature and the flexibility of Microsoft 365. Flexibility is really important in, in this part. And um, let's explore the capability of Microsoft Graph um, related to guest management. And let me show the, the next slide where there are some updates, some recent, some months ago, some recent update about. Uh, Microsoft Graph SharePoint Admin API. Uh, the settings that you see uh, in uh, some uh, slide, uh, uh, this you see in, uh, oh, let me come back. The settings that, that you see in SharePoint uh, recently uh, are um, Microsoft deploy some API, and this API uh, you can manage by API the sharing capability. So you can enable or disable uh, these, uh, these settings. Uh, I don't think that it is um, a frequent setting that you need to do, but uh, a frequent setting that you need to manage with, uh, you can manage with this API is the sharing domain restriction uh, and uh, the list of domain allowed or blocked from your tenant. Uh, so in this way, you can manage uh, all the settings and the uh, personal site retention and other settings from uh, from admin center or SharePoint. Uh, 
uh, the permission level that you need to use uh, is not uh, a global album uh, from uh, the, the tenant, but uh, there is a specific uh, permission that is a SharePoint tenant settings read write. Uh, so uh, the, I, I, I think that this is a really, uh, really high permission and um, Microsoft is working uh, in create and manage uh, create and manage uh, a resource consent uh, permission. So in this way, you can use minor permission or specific permission for your feature. And I think that when you use API, you need to choose the right permission in order to uh, manage uh, API better. Okay, let me share my screen. And let's uh, start about uh, talk about uh, uh, Graph API uh, for user management. Okay. Uh, in this uh, uh, screen, you see uh, Postman. Postman is a tool that we can use for uh, um, try, test, and uh, see results and response from uh, API. In this case, I uh, upload a um, graph uh, uh, API um, collection. Uh, this collection uh, contains a lot of uh, call. For instance, you can take the list of users from your tenant. For to this, you need, first of all, uh, uh, choose the right environment, it is my tenant, okay, where there is configured uh, the app ID and the seeker ID of my app registration. And uh, you need to uh, create a berry token. So I generate a new access token and generating this access token, I can use this access token for call uh, my uh, API. So. For instance, if I want to get all the user, this is an, an application uh, way, you can use the delegated application approach. In the application approach, you, you can uh, get all the user from the tenant. And in if, you, if we see the response, we can see that uh, this um, user is not a guest, okay? Because uh, this user, it is from my tenant. Uh, if I want to uh, take all guest user from my tenant, I can select okay, specific uh, uh, property from uh, my tenant and uh, filter this, um, filter this, uh, uh, this call by user type as guest. So in this way, I can get all the guest user type guest from my tenant. Okay, there is already the external user state and the creation type. In this case, is, is null. Okay, but if um, usually is, it is uh, valorized. Uh, what we see now is how to invite a user from our tenant, and uh, this is the generic API. So um, I can invite my user, a new user, in my tenant, and I can leverage a message. Okay, customize it, and I can um, set the invitation or direct tool. And obviously, there is the user display name and the user email address of the invited person. Okay, so for instance, this is my invitation message from my personal email, from my personal account, and this is the message that I want to try to uh, to write in my mail. So if I invite my personal user to my tenant. Let me, uh, okay, this is the answer. And in the answer, there is the invite redeem URL. This URL, it is the URL that the user must to uh, click if uh, when they uh, was, uh, were invited in, uh, in the tenant. So if we see the answer, this is my email. And in this email, there is the domain organization. There is the message that I, would, I write in a message and the uh, link for the access invitation. 
uh, there is only already another um, property where you can specify um, where uh, if if you want to uh, add a user in uh, in copy in, in the mail. Okay. Uh, okay, these, all these API are really, really useful if you want to manage an offline process to invite, um, invite guests in your tenant and manage uh, guests in your tenant. Uh, let's see the Active Directory and the Entra ID, there is uh, my user, and the status is invitation. And uh, what we can see in uh, here is that uh, all, all the properties are related to uh, my the user that I just uh, create. So create date today, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, Giuliano, take the again the stage uh, so we can uh, continue with our presentation. Yeah. Maybe I can uh, load again yeah, thank the presentation. You. I I yeah. will try to upload. I think that's now I can because I I'm using the classic uh, uh, Teams uh, yeah. desktop version, and uh, I think now it should work because I see the Power PowerPoint live. Uh, oh. I can. <clears throat> I'm using the new version, by the way. Maybe ah, okay. We know. All right, so now it's uh, working. Yeah. I'm uploading. I have to speed up because we don't have uh, oh. much time yet. And yeah. so let me move very fast on the slide that we have to talk about. And it is this one. All right. Good. So it's it's time to um, it's time to move to move and uh, to talk about uh, the Microsoft 365 Management API. We have seen a de demo uh, by Federico using the Graph API, and now let's talk about other API, the Management Activity API. This give you the chance to um, get informed when. Uh, a new guest is invited or when a user shares something with some guest, a user outside of your organization. So the most one of the most important place in the Microsoft 365 admin center is definitely the audit log. Here an admin can monitor every kind of activity in Microsoft 365. When a user make the login, when the user open a Azure point site, when the user shares something uh, with other users, when the user work on Teams, create meeting and uh, open files and so on. So every kind of activity is stored here. So the first thing to do is turn on the auditing and this means that the admin will be able to, to have all the information here aggregated. Now let's move with the next slide and let's talk about the the audit log related to Microsoft 365 groups. So what you can do here is using a combination of API, the Graph API and the Management API to get informed when a user invite a guest in a team in Microsoft Teams, for example. You need a specific permission for that. You need to grant permission in order to consume the Graph API, and then you can schedule uh, your process to read the audit log in order to pull out this this information and then uh, trigger your your process so if you use this approach with the graph api the microsoft graph api this uh, is limited to the microsoft 365 groups but if you want to target sharepoint and onedrive as well so you need to use the Office 365 Management API as well. So the Management API offer the ability to check the activity, and this is what we want. Moreover, you have the ability to also pull out and read messages that Microsoft sent to your Microsoft 365 tenant. But we are um, we want to use the Activity API. So and uh, what you can do here is 
um, leveraging this API to get information related to the Active Directory or to exchange. Maybe you want to, to get informed when the user send a specific email or uh, when attach something to the email, every kind of activity related to exchange. You can get informed also about activities on SharePoint, of course. And then there is another content type, which is more generic and uh, basically target the, the entire services in uh, Microsoft 365, then Teams, OneDrive, Stream, and so on. And finally, we have the last content type, which is the DLP uh, policies. All right, let's see now the, the demo. And so now I'm going to share my screen and I will show you something on my demo tenant. So we have seen before that I invited uh, uh, and I shared resources with guests. So what we can see here is uh, some email that I received. Now let me open Microsoft Teams. I'm trying to zoom my uh, my browser, so I hope you can see a bit better. It's not working using the shortcut of my keyboard, but uh, let's use the panel of uh, Microsoft Edge. So we have here uh, three notification in the activity feed, and what we can see here is uh, an application called the uh, Gooms in this case that uh, send me a push notification. It means that I can use uh, this kind of approach um, I can create a personal app in Microsoft Teams that works uh, in the desktop or in mobile, it doesn't matter. I can use then this out of the box um, functionality about the activity, get a push notification in the Teams mobile app as well, and get informed when I have to onboard someone. So before I invited uh, in the IT team uh, this uh, guest, and here I have now this possibility. I, I can confirm uh, the collaboration with this guest, or I can keep, uh, or I can keep him as is. I have uh, the notification here, but I can open the app also here on the left rail of my Teams. And now here I can onboard my user. For example, in my team, I can click on the confirm button. I can provide additional information like first name, last name and the company name, and then I can click on confirm. Now I can confirm the collaboration. I have some time, uh, non, I don't know, let's say 90 days of collaboration with this, with this guest, and then I can build my own uh, lifecycle management process. I can review this guest. So when the expiration date is near, uh, in this case, we have 8 March. And when the, the expiration date is near, it's coming to an end, so I can uh, wake up, I can trigger my process that send an email to the uh, inviter, in this case, me, Giuliano, and I can uh, then inform him that the collaboration, uh, um, it uh, it need to be reviewed. So the user can take the decision to revoke access to the user or can still collaborate with him by refreshing and renewing the collaboration. Here I can also revoke directly the collaboration with this user because I don't need to collaborate with him anymore. And across this application, I'm, I'm able to, uh, using the, the API, the Microsoft 365 uh, graph, and the Office 365 Management API, I'm able to revoke immediately access to the to this user. So this user will be removed from uh, this uh, group in SharePoint, the visitors group in uh, in the global IT. Uh, all right, this is basically what you can do using uh, this um, API. It's pretty cool. So you can build your own uh, process and. Uh, and it's uh, very, very helpful in terms of uh, workload because the the admin don't don't need to struggle by reviewing every time um, guests invited in your tenant. So let's wrap up now the session with the last slide. I re-uploaded the presentation and let's move to the last slide. Here you can. Uh, you can see all uh, our references. If you want to stay in touch with us, feel free to write uh, to me or Federico on LinkedIn or uh, 
<coughs> or Twitter, sorry. And uh, again, here you can find you can find the blog of Federico and my YouTube channel. Uh, so, sorry. I think uh, that's all. that's all. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Giuliano. Thanks everybody for joining our ses session. Okay. Thank you so much, Federico and Giuliano. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you a lot. Bye. Have a nice conference. Next, I would like.